Hey guys, before the video begins, I would like to make a very important announcement in regards to a new channel made by a friend of mine, Kelly Productions. He has created a new channel named The Watch. It's a channel dedicated to making superhero films and miniseries of a new universe that has been created and named The Watch. And the first film is out right now. If you follow me on Twitter, Instagram, or even on this very channel, you know I've spoken about a film that's been involved that I've been involved with. Well, this is it. The Midnight Warden. I'd highly appreciate it if you guys subscribed to this channel, liked the video, turned on notifications, and shared this film with your friends so we can make more films in the future. The more awareness of our films, the more we can make. You can find a link to the channel in the description below of this video, or click on my channel and go to the section channels, and it will be there as we speak. And with that being said, guys, I hope you enjoy today's video. What is going on, everybody? My name is Zell Prince, and welcome back to yet another reaction video. Now, today, as guys, I have another SCP video to show you guys. Um, it was one of the two videos I was looking at during the last SCP reaction video I, I had um, uploaded. This is SCP-2783, Silent Lemonade, Lemonations of a Clockwork Goddess. Now, like I said, I try and find SCP videos that I know I have never seen or heard of this particular SCPs, and this one does not ring a bell in my head whatsoever. So, with that being said, guys, I'm going to go ahead and to react to this bad boy. The video was also made by SCP Explained Story and Animation, so please go support them because they make very fascinating uh, SCP videos. And let's get right in today's, into the reaction video in three, two. One, go. Welcome to the graveyard. Please keep your voices down. It's a very <laughs> somber place. You can feel the sadness here, the pain, the things left unsaid. In that sense, it's not unlike every other graveyard all across the world. But of course, we wouldn't be covering it here if it wasn't just any graveyard, would we? The eagle-eyed among you may notice that we're walking through a military cemetery for starters. It's but the spoofer. people buried here aren't the martyrs of any war your history teacher would tell you about. The people and entities interred here fought their wars in the shadows. They died in the dark, so we could live in the light. But who are they? The SCP what Foundation. Is this place? Who are the people buried here, really? To find that out, we need to take a step back. It began in Site-43, yep. specifically Laboratory 37 of Site-43's Artificial Intelligence Wing. Researchers were conducting a series of tests on a few classified artificial intelligence anomalies with the help of a Foundation-made artificial intelligence construct known as Marvin. However, what was meant to be a set of routine cognition tests turned into a mass containment breach believed to be coordinated by several of the rogue AIs involved. Things went sideways quickly. The breach resulted in the deaths of three members of security personnel, and it was only stopped when Marvin and a more benevolent anomaly worked together to get things back under control. While their efforts were valiant, they weren't enough to save Marvin himself, who was rendered inoperable during the breach. All of the copies of the anomalous AIs were neutralized after testing was complete. Under the orders of the site director, the remaining materials relating to Marvin and the neutralized anomalies were left in Laboratory 37. Things appeared to be returning to normal, until maintenance personnel entered the lab later that day. You can undeniably encounter some pretty strange things inside an SCP Foundation laboratory. It comes with the territory. But when you walk into a lab and find yourself standing in a giant military cemetery, it's probably time to contact your what? supervisors and let them know. Wait, hold on a second. Are you telling me that the, lab the whole laboratory later that day turned into a spatial anomaly? Is that what you're trying to tell me? While those maintenance workers didn't truly comprehend what they'd discovered, the Foundation researchers who got involved shortly afterward were able to take in the full scope of it. An ever-expanding extra-dimensional graveyard seeming to exist outside of space and time as we understand it, which soon became known to the Foundation as SCP-2783. The cemetery is believed to currently contain over a million graves. That's over double the mere 400,000 buried at Arlington National Cemetery, 
These graves are meticulously arranged into huge square grids, each one containing around 90,000 graves apiece. Wow. This would be peculiar enough in its own right, but things got a whole lot stranger. Each grave is clearly marked with a name and an epitaph, but ground-penetrating radar tests conducted by the Foundation revealed that only 30% of the graves actually contain human remains, and the remaining 70% are currently empty. And considering that the number of graves actually seems to be increasing at an arbitrary rate, it isn't difficult to draw the conclusion that some event in the near future is destined to fill these empty graves. Oops, Perhaps King. a war like one we've never seen is on the horizon, and SCP-2783 is growing in preparation to house its teeming casualties. Death is a funny thing. It can have varied and unpredictable faces in the eyes of its beholders, and the great SCP-2783 cemetery is no exception to this rule. It appears slightly different to all who view it, even when viewing it at the same time. Factors like climate and weather are dictated by the place of a person's origin. The same goes for the style of the grave markers. They seem to be culturally specific to the beholder's view of what a military grave marker tends to look like, and the epitaphs are written in the native language of whoever sees them. It is a truly universal cemetery, wow. a place where anyone and everyone can come and grieve the courageous fallen with equal understanding and respect. The Foundation has been able to use GPS tracking to locate the graveyard's equivalent on our planet, tracing it back to an ancient tomb in southern Iraq. There, the Foundation collaborated with the ORIA, the Organization for the Reclamation of Islamic Artifacts, to investigate further. The mission discovered a number of artifacts belonging to several previously undocumented pre-Mesopotamian civilizations, but hmm. failed to uncover any physical evidence of SCP-2783 at this site. The cemetery is marked off by a fence that seems impossible to penetrate. Those who walk really? through the door in Laboratory 37 manifest just outside of a gate built into the fence. However, any attempt to walk back through this gate will simply lead to the subject exiting back through the doors to Laboratory 37. Thankfully for any Foundation staff who left something they actually needed in Laboratory 37, the teleportation does not affect machines, so remote-controlled robots can still be sent into the lab. Shortly after discovering SCP-2783, reconnaissance teams were sent in to start cataloging the grave markings. As concerning information started to pour in, the Foundation upped the security clearance on both physical and informational access to SCP-2783. Nobody below level 5 security clearance is able to see the full picture. Oh, wow. so, so only the only, so only the O5 council can have a look at this particular SCP. Is the full picture. Well, at the risk of getting assassinated by the red right hand, let's take a look at a few recorded grave markers and see if we can find out. Y H W H A 0000 inscribed with the name Y H W H, a potential shortening of the name Yahweh a common alias of the Abrahamic God. The epitaph on the grade reads, He was vital in her construction. His design shall prove vital in her reconstruction. However, there are multiple variants of this grave, and while all seem to memorialize some kind of creator deity, there seems to be no favoritism of any particular type of deity or any specific religious denomination. Sightings of variants of this gravestone have reached the double digits. Then there's grave AA00002, marked Hawa Bat Ashra, also known as Eve, the first Eve. woman. Her grave marking reads, The serpent within the library bestowed upon her great wisdom. Her loss inspires us all to seek wisdom the in Wanderer's this library? The living world. It is believed by some that Ashra was the mother of Cain and Abel, SCP-073 and SCP-076, and also spent a period of time as O5-1, wishing to guide humanity in the right direction. How about grave AA-00005, marked Lilith Bot YHWH, also known as SCP-336. Her epitaph reads, she was loved greatly, her beauty will not be forgotten. According to Foundation records, Lilith three, three, is six. a beautiful humanoid woman. Add that. My list of things. SCP-336. SCP is a new to look at. 
and with reptilian legs, whose enchanting voice has the power to induce infertility in women, and a combination of comas and anomalous tumors in men. Anomalous in the sense that they will birth vicious, deadly chimeras. Next, grave AA00006, marked Set Ben Adam. His epitaph reads, This graveyard was constructed under his orders. When those interred here rise again, it is under his command they shall fight. Set, or Seth, is also known as SCP-4840-A, a powerful sibling of Cain and Abel living in SCP-4840. How, when, or why he decided to order It seems like a, a majority of SCPs, at least the ones I'm fully aware of, like Cain, Abel, Abel like that, it seems to all come from like religious beliefs bringing those religious uh, figures into the SCP Foundation. I tend to forget that sometimes people do that. The construction of SCP-2783 is unknown. Then grave AB-21917, marked unknown. unknown. Their epitaph reads, a crafter of the flesh and a disciple of the tongueless speaker, a worthy foe. His precious moments were expended on the hordes of the Crimson Crown, and so he is memorialized. Scarlet King representation. ...among the heroes of the people. Radars of the grave showed that the creature interred with had the biology atypical of a human. Our interpretation of the epitaph is that this was a follower of sarcasism, the worship of the flesh. He oh, worked with the Church of the Broken God and the SCP Foundation to fight against the Scarlet King. Okay, never mind. I wasn't entirely wrong. As a result, next grave AL21343, believed to belong to Dr. Sophia Light. Her epitaph reads, Our Savior and Prophet, Our Staff and Shepherd, The Machine Goddess smiled upon this house, And even now, those who rest here are tended to. This is one of the many references to the Machine or Clockwork Goddess, an alternate title for Mekane, the deity of the Church of the Broken God. Evidence suggests that this cemetery was the work of the Church, and that all who are interred there were or are going to be aligned with the Broken God in the struggle against a far greater threat to us all. Next, AL-30056, marked Nicholas Flamel, with the epitaph, an esteemed scholar who rose to great heights, but like Icarus, fell from great heights. While mythologically Flamel is believed to have been an alchemist and creator of the legendary Philosopher's Stone, the Foundation hasn't detected any confirmed anomalous activity connected to him. Of much greater interest to fans of this channel, we come upon AL41867, marked Lord Theodore Thomas Blackwood. His that name sounds very familiar, but it doesn't ring off the top of my tongue, so let me hear who this is again. Reading, his service to the advancement of science and humanity shall carry on. A full-sized human skeleton lays in the grave, so perhaps Lord Blackwood's service did carry on, just in a different body. Then came the grave of Private Pyotr okay, I did not. of Tukov, whose epitaph reads, He and his fellows have seen the gates of hell, though they do not deserve it. They shall be first to greet the hordes of the Crimson Crown when the gates open. Fans of this channel may remember Private Avtukov from our coverage of SCP-180. He was one of the soldiers involved in the horrific ordeal of the anomalous Battle of Houston Woods. Another name you might recognize is the one carved into grave marker AM21450, Dr. Dr. Alto Clef. That's right, everyone's favorite lovable loose cannon. His epitaph reads, A loving father, he gave much more than was demanded of him. The variants of his grave also list his other aliases, Agent Ukulele and Adam El Assem, the first man. The date of his death corresponds with a recorded near-containment breach that resulted in the deaths of two other members of personnel. Clef cheats death another day, for now. Huh. And the most recent grave, AM21488 was the grave of Marvin, the AI that helped save the oh, day the during AI. the containment breach that opened the portal to SCP-2783. His epitaph reads, A machine mind that gave his life to protect his builders, just as the machine goddess before him. There will always be a place in paradise for those who gave of themselves as he did. It is somewhat heartwarming to know that, in the eyes of the clockwork goddess, a mere AI can be revered just as much for heroism 
as anyone constructed from flesh and blood. <laughs> Recorded back in 2017 during a routine search, Agent Philip McLean saw 13 humanoid entities in funeral garb, with an insignia described as a white circular shield with three equidistant protrusions. Inside the shield were three equidistant black arrows piercing a white circle outlined in black. These entities performed what seemed to be funeral rites. Before Wait, wasn't that, what's her name from, from what happened from Site 17? I forgot her name. The dirt below. The name on the new grave marker was Hollis, Captain it is her. Captain <laughs> Michelle Hollis, Mobile Task Force Zeta-9. Her epitaph read, She died in a strange and faraway place, with a smile on her face, a weapon in her hand, and foes on all sides. She exemplified what all warriors should strive to be. For those of you that can remember our three-part yeah. series on SCP-1730... <laughs> I remember that series very well. You may also remember that Captain Hollis was the brave MTF leader who sacrificed her own life in the terrible bowels of Site-13 to turn on the Thresher Machine, kicking the whole awful place to another dimension. Here, her heroic sacrifice can never be forgotten. While there's an ominous subtext to a lot of SCP-2783, from its predictions of individual deaths to hints at a bloody war with the Scarlet King coming down the tracks, there's something undeniably beautiful about the idea of this place. We share in the mourning and reverence of the clockwork goddess, of heroes great and small, gone but never forgotten. In SCP-2783, no act of courage or sacrifice will ever be lost to time. Be sure to leave quietly on your way out. Like we said before, this is a somber place. Now go check out SCP-1440, the old man that kills all living things he touches, and evil monster created by SCP Foundation, SCP-2419, the laughing men, for more SCPs linked to death, the final frontier. Huh. Alright, that video, that SCP video seemed a little bit more wholesome than I was expecting. I, I was expecting that it should be like some graveyard that was out in the open that had anomalous properties and the SCP Foundation uh, closed it off. But no, it ended up being inside a laboratory on an SCP Foundation base. I find it, I found that interesting. Because it had, like I said, it had like predictions of people's future deaths and the into the war with the scarlet king because the scarlet king was mentioned a lot throughout this entire video and that little part with hollis at the end that made me like go rethink about everything i've just i've watched of scp videos for like the last three years that struck me for a loop there <laughs> but um hopefully you guys enjoyed today's reaction video please like and subscribe all that stuff guys and i will see you in the next video I watch, which will definitely be an SCP video. Bye!